Jeremy Amphill with JU Flooring. I'm going to go through the steps we use to install carpet in this second floor bedroom. The homeowner had already torn out the old carpet, so the next step will be to go around and scrape up all the old staples and repair any tack strip that needs tightened up. To clean out the staples from the previous installation, we're going to use a large head stand-up scraper. The handle extends so you don't got to bend over as much to get them out. This can be a little tricky depending on how rough the old floor is. In this application there's a lot of staples and the boards aren't very level so it's a little bit of a pain. And uh, I'll go through and I'll show you how this is done. tips width going the whole way around. It'll just make it a lot easier for tucking your carpet in. Now the finger tips width can be tightened or loosened a little bit depending on how thick of carpets that you mess with. For your corners here, we even try to keep those uniform where it's a fingertip away from your wall. Fingertip the whole way around. This way, when your corner is complete, it has that uniform, squared off look. On your outside corners, we're going to try to keep those as uniformed as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this other piece as a guide so we kind of know where to cut it at. So we're going to come out here. The edge of the tack strip, keeping it at a fingertip away. Alright, 
after all the tack strips have been uh, filled in, you want to go around with some backup nails and tighten up any tack strip that might be loose. As you can see, this one has a wiggle, so when we power stretch, it would literally just pull that right up off the floor. we'll either kick it or we'll bump it with the hammer and if it wiggles it needs a backup nail put in because once we power stretch it will just pull it right off the floor so what we do is if we'll put it try to keep our fingertip away and then we'll put a backup nail in there the next step after repairing any tack strips that need it fixed is putting down the padding this room is a little less than 12 foot wide and the padding comes 6 foot wide. So we're going to run this the shortest distance across the room. This way it minimizes waste. There's one or two different ways of installing this stuff. One is a hammer stapler. The other way is pad adhesive and we use this for concrete applications. And I'll show you guys how to put this stuff down. to be overlapping the tack strip but not running up the wall very far. What we're going to do is we're going to roll it over here across the room and then we're going to use our fingers to kind of gauge at where the corner of the baseboard and the tack strip is. We can roll it back and then we can cut straight across the top. And that should basically put us down close to where we need to be at. Alright, we got the pad all laid out. It's ready to be stapled. On the outside edges, I usually staple about every 6 inches. On the seams, I usually staple every 3 inches. That kind of just stops the padding from being able to roll up when you unroll the carpet. And I'll go through and I'll show you how this is installed. Make sure your padding is all tightened together. Make sure there's no gaps. If there is a gap, you can kind of use your hand to pull the pad or tight push the pad. But on the outside edges, I usually go about every six inches. And down your seams, I usually go about every three inches on both sides of the pad. just stops the pad from being able to curl up when you unroll the carpet.
now that the padding is all secured and your seams are all stapled down, the next thing to do is to cut the padding to the tack strips. What you want to do is you want to feel here around the edge of the padding to see where the edge of the tack strip is. This way you can know where to cut and then you just put your knife in there and follow your tack strips. You want to try to keep as tight as you can. This way there's new gaps. And then your padding should be tied up against your tack strip. That's how the padding is installed. The next step is to bring the carpet up. Alright, we got the carpet up here. The next step is to make sure that we have all the carpets going the same direction. If you would turn a piece, it would show a line at the seam because the carpet is going a different direction. The easiest way to go about doing this is on the back of the carpet there's a big line and there's a little line. If you make sure the lines are going the same direction. If those lines aren't there, if you flip the carpet over, there is a smooth and a rough direction with the carpet. You want to try to make sure that they all stay going the same direction. Here, I'll fold it back a little bit to get the carpet to lay flat and then I'll stay about an inch inch and a half off the edge of the carpet and start running your screwdriver through there to create a straight line you'll actually feel a groove that the screwdriver will ride through to get that straight edge
All right, to cut the seam after you get done running your screwdriver through, <clears throat> you want to use your loop pile cutter. There's a blade that slides out the top and there's two grooves. There's one on the left and one on the right. You want to keep your blade towards the side that you want to keep. So with this piece, we're going to keep the blade on the left and that piece I'll keep the blade on the right. And then this thing will just glide right through your, the line you created with the screwdriver. The same thing when we go to cut the other side, we want to keep the blade on the right because we're going to keep the piece that's on the right. Alright, we got the seam edges prepped. The next step is, is to stick semen tape underneath the edge. What I will do here is I'll run it up the wall about two inches so it gives me a little extra to grab onto instead of grabbing melting tape. I will also latch it onto the tack strip. This way it will hold onto the other end while I stretch it out across the room. And I'll bring it over here into the corner. And I'll add another two inches up the wall so I have something to grab a hold of. I'll cut that off and then I'll slide this underneath the edge where there, there is a, a thick bead of glue that runs down the middle of the tape. You want that to be underneath the seam edge. Next thing you want to do is pull your carpet in tight to your seam. Make sure everything lines up nicely. And she's ready to go. All right, we're all set up here, ready to start making our seam. I got my semen iron all warmed up. I got a tractor here for uh, pushing the napperoos around. I got my stair tool and my kicker for being able to finesse the carpet a little bit. And we're gonna start putting this seam together. All right, we put our semen iron underneath there to help melt the tape. Give it a little wiggle just to make sure all the glue is melted. You want to hold down over here just to make sure that the tape doesn't slide as you move your iron. What I do is I move it about two to three inches, maybe four. Just separate the naps and make sure your backing is tight. And I stair tool it down into the corner. And I'll move my iron about six inches away from the wall. Make sure your backing's all tight. Take your tractor. And move your nap rows to where everything is hidden. Let it warm up a little bit, move it a couple of inches, tractor it, 
and slide her down. And we're going to keep rinsing and repeating that whole process till we get to the other side. Use your kicker to either pull or push the carpet. Give you that edge without the carpet leaning on top of it, being on top of itself. The seam is done. All right, we have our seams cooled down now that we gave those some time to relax. We reliefed all of our carpet in around all these corners as best as we can. The next step is, is to start stretching. We're going to have to choose a spot to start working because the room is basically just a square. So we're going to just start here in this corner and we're going to work towards the farthest corner. We're going to go roughly 
four or five feet from the corner. We're going to basically picture that as if that's the doorway that we walk into our room from. Just kind of boot that on the tack strip is that to give it a little bit of tension. All right, we brought you in a little closer so I can show you a little bit more detail. This here, we're gonna fold the carpet over like a piece of paper up tight against the, the baseboard. And then we're gonna push it down into our corner as, as tight as we can. And we're gonna just kind of slice a little tiny corner off of it. So like we're gonna just cut basically a square off the corner. And then that will give us less carpet to finagle into the corner and that will actually lay in there a lot tighter. And the stretcher, you want to keep that about two to three inches away from your wall. Extend that out to where you can get some pretty decent leverage on it. And just push your handle down so that the carpet will run up the wall and you're only going to go we're only going to go down the wall about the the length that we started over there which is about the size of a door doorway we just keep on working it down the wall a little bit And that's how that first stretch is done. After you're done the stretch, you want to take your stair tool and you want to rub down your wall. So you can hear all those teeth coming through. And then you move your stretcher to the other side of the room. Next, after making your first stretch, you want to start in your corner and work towards your where you, the way you went, but we're going to just boot those on the tack strips as we go around the wall. Up here is we want to be able to cut the carpet to where it will go down over the edge and make that uh, finished off look. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get rid of most of this carpet so it's a little less to deal with. We're going to slice this back here on the corner to the edge of the, the wall and we can pull that back and then just follow a straight line straight back your carpet. 
And then when you fold that over, you can determine if you need to take a little more. We're going to take about a quarter of an inch off more. And that should be ready to go there. And the same thing over here. I'm going to slice that back to the edge of the, the wall. Cut straight back here. And that's ready to go there. And next thing we want to do is we're going to stair tool it down into the corner. you push that down tight to the carpet <coughs> staple about every one inch stair tool it in there and finish off your step and that's good to go and the next thing you want to do is just boot this on up here And then we're going to rub that wall down, and that's all ready all right, to go. We have all that side set on there at the steps. The next thing is, is we're going to stretch the long way of the room, but we're going to go the entire way across because we're just going to pull all that carpet this direction.
Alright, the next thing you gotta do is we're gonna bump this wall on so we can finish stretching out that direction. Step to stretching now that we have that whole entire wall set on is we're just going to finish stretching everything sideways the whole way down this wall and that'll be everything for stretching Second to last step is trim all the carpet edges in and tuck the carpet. And I'll go around and I'll show you how we go about doing that. There's a couple of different techniques. These are a couple that I use. On a wall like this that's really short and you don't want to trim your fingers, we can take the carpet fan or a piece of sheet metal. I usually just use my carpet fan, but we can tuck that in behind the carpet like that. And then I can just basically cut a quarter of an inch above the tack strip. This way we can shave that off. Basically like that. And then go around and just tuck that in there. And I brush my edges away as I go so I don't gotta use the hose for the vacuum. But that's one technique that we do there. The next thing that we do is we'll fold the carpet over a little bit like that, make a little slice, fold it down to where it's flat, and then we'll just cut a quarter of an inch above that crease, and then you can just go around and you can just tuck that. Make a little cut mark down here about a quarter inch above the, the crease mark. And we can tuck that in there. As you can see, we kept everything uniform around there. So when you go to tuck, everything just looks like it runs straight up to the baseboard and everything looks like it's tucked in there nice and neat. guys the last step to installing carpet is the cleanup um, we're gonna run the vacuum around pick up all the carpet naps and that'll be a finish for this job all right ladies and gentlemen that's a wrap for us we just showed you the couple of steps that we used for carpet installation if you like what you saw, hit the subscribe and the like button, and we'll see you guys on the next install.